Hi guys, this is Connie. Getting ready to start a new section, a new playlist of Connie Reads. This one is called Freak the Mighty. We read Max the Mighty and a lot of people enjoyed it. That was one that was recommended. And they said, read the first one, read the first one. And of course I can't read the first line of the back book because of this. But it's a, the part that I can read says, best friends forever. I never had a braid until Freak came along. That's what Max thought. All his life, he'd been called stupid, dumb, slow. It didn't help that his body seemed to be growing faster than his mind. It didn't help that people were afraid of him. So Max learned how to be alone, at least until Freak came along. Freak was weird too. He had a little body and a really big brain. Together, Max and Freak were unstoppable. Unstoppable. Together, they were Freak the Mighty. So. Da, 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 da. Intro stuff. Intro stuff. Freak the Mighty! How many times does this has to be on a page? Oh, all of these things. To the real Kevin and the real Gwen with love. Oh, this only came out in 1993 by Rodman Philbrick. Rock on. So, sneak peek at Max the Mighty, which we've already read. Uh, da -da. Afterwards, contacts, Q and A. What? Oh, well, I'm gonna do this as the introduction then, and we'll and we'll start with chapter one in the next video about the author. After years of writing mysteries and suspense fillers for adults, Rodman Philbrick decided to try his hand at a novel for young readers. That novel, Freak the Mighty. Huh? was published in 1993 to great acclaim and stellar reviews. In addition to being named an ALA Best Book for Young Adults and winning several state awards, it was also made into the Miramax feature film The Mighty in 1998. What? No way! Rod returns to Maxwell Kane's story in a sequel, Max the Mighty, a fast-paced cross-country odyssey, which we've already read. Um, just look it up in one of the playlists on my page. Rod takes young readers to the American West in his exhilarating tale of two brothers on the run, the Fire Pony, winner of the Capital Choice Award, and on to land where nothing is as it seem in the science nothing is as it seems in the science fiction adventure Rem World. His thought-provoking novel, The Last Book in the Universe, also an ALA best book for young adults, takes place in a futuristic world where no one reads anymore. School library journal named Rod's most recent book, The Young Man and the Sea, the best book of the year, and praised its wide open adventure and heart pounding suspense. Rodman Philbrick has also written several spine tingling series for young readers with his wife, Lynn Harnett, including The House on the Cherry Street, or The House on Cherry Street, and The Werewolf Chronicles. Rod and Lynn divide their time between their homes on the coast of Maine and in the Florida Keys. Neat. I didn't realize there was already a movie about this book. What? And I did look at the last book in the universe. I thought about picking that up too, but I didn't want to shy too far away from what you guys wanted. So that's an introduction to Rodman Philbrick, Freak the Mighty, from the Newberry author, honor author of the mostly true adventures of Homer P. Fig. Hmm. I'm getting excited to read this, and I hope that you will be careful with that and enjoy, and tune in to chapter one next time. Bye. And if I knew how short the first chapter was, I would have just added it to the intro. Hi guys, this is Connie again. I'm going to go ahead and actually, future Connie's going to edit all of that together. So again, here's chapter one of Freak the Mighty. Chapter one, The Unvanquished Truth. I never had a brain until Freak came along and let me borrow his for a while. And that's the truth, the whole truth. The unvanquished truth is how Freak would say it. And for a long time, it was him who did the talking. Except I had a way of saying things with my fists and my feet even before we became Freak the Mighty, slaying dragons and fools and walking high above the world. Called me kicker for a time. This was daycare the year Graham and Grimm took me over. And I had a thing about booting anyone who dared to touch me because they were always trying to throw a hug on me. It was like it was medicine I needed. Oh, like it was medicine I needed. 
Graham and Grimm, bless their pointed little heads. They're my mother's people, her parents. And they figured, whoa, better put this little critter with the little critters his own age. Maybe it will improve his temper. Yeah, right. Instead, what happened? I invented games like kickboxing and kick knees and kick faces and kick teachers and kick the other little daycare critters because I knew what a rotten lie that hug stuff was. Oh, I knew. That's when I got my first look at Freak, that year of the phony hugs. He didn't look so different back then. We, we were all of us pretty small, right? But he wasn't in the playroom with us every day. Just now and then, he'd show up, looking sort of fierce is how I remember him. Except later, it was Freak himself who taught me that remembering is a great invention of the mind. And if you try hard enough, you can remember anything, whether it really happened or not. So maybe he wasn't really all that fierce in daycare, except I'm pretty sure he did hit a kid with his crutch once. Whacked a little brat pretty good. <laughs> and for some reason, little kicker never got around to kicking little freak. Maybe it was those crutches kept me from lashing out at him. Man, those crutches were cool. I wanted a pair for myself. And when Little Freak showed up one day with these shiny braces strapped to his crooked legs, metal tubes right up to his hips, why, those were even more cool than crutches. <clears throat> I'm Robot Man, Little Freak would go, making these weird robot noises as he humped himself around the playground. Rrr, rrr, rrr. Like he had robot motors inside his legs going rrr, rrr, rrr. And this look, like, don't mess with me, man. Maybe I got a laser cat and hidden inside these leg braces. Smoke a hole right through you. No question, Freak was hooked on robots, even back then. This little guy, two feet tall, and already he knew what he wanted. Then, for a long time, I never saw Freak anymore. One day, he just never came back to daycare. And the next thing I remember... I'm like in third grade or something, and I catch a glimpse of this yellow-haired kid scowling at me from one of those cripple vans. Man, they were death ray eyes. And I think, hey, that's him, the robot boy. And it was like, whoa, because I'd forgotten all about him. Daycare was a blank place in my head, and nobody had called me kicker for a long time. Mad Max, they were calling me, or Max Factor. But this one butthead in LD class called me Maxipad until I persuaded him otherwise. Graham and Grimm always called me Maxwell, though, which I hated worst of all. Oh, I missed a sentence. Graham and Grimm always called me Maxwell, though, which is supposed to be my real name. And sometimes I hated that worst of all. Maxwell. Ugh. Grim, out in the kitchen one night after supper, whispering to Graham, had she noticed how much Maxwell was getting to look like him. Him? Which is the way he always talked about my father, who had married this dear departed daughter, oh, his dear departed daughter, and produced eek, eek, Maxwell. Grim never says my father's name, just him, like his name is too scary to say. It's more than just the way Maxwell resembles him, Grimm said that night in the kitchen. The boy is like him. We'd better watch out. You never know what he might do while we're sleeping. Like his father did. And Graham right away shushes him and says, Don't ever say that, because little pictures have big ears, which make me run to the mirror to see if it is my big ears. Oh. And Graham white blah, 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 words and phrases. And Graham right away shushes, shushes him and says, don't ever say that because little pictures have big ears, which makes me run to the mirror to see if it is my big ears made me look like him. What a butthead, huh? Well, I was a butthead because like I said, I never had a brain until Freaked moved down the street the summer before eighth grade, right? That's the summer I grew so fast that Grim said we'd best let the boy go barefoot He's exploding out of his shoes. That barefoot summer, when I fell down a lot, and the weirdo robot boy with his white-yellow hair and his weird, fierce eyes moved into the duplex down the block with his beautiful brown-haired mom, the fair Gwen of Air. 
Only a falling down goon would think that was her real name, right? Like I said, are you paying attention here? Because you don't even know yet how he got to be Freak the Mighty, which was pretty cool, even if I do say so myself. That was a mouthful. And that was chapter one, so be careful with that and enjoy, please, and thank you for real this time. And I will see you for chapter two. Bye.